Are you an Emacs user? Are you also an email user? Would you like to be able to check your email inside of Emacs? Today I'm going to show you how to set up the MU4E email client inside of Doom Emacs. So let me switch over to the desktop here. And today I am in a virtual machine of Arco Linux. I'm going to be demonstrating this on an Arch based system. And I mention that because we're going to have to install a couple of different programs to make this work. And these programs we're installing, they may be named differently if you're on a non Arch distribution. So something like Debian or Ubuntu, I don't know what exactly these package names will be. But on Arch, what we need to do is first, I need to bring up a terminal. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm about to install here. And we need to install using a AUR helper like EA because the packages that we want to install are actually not in the normal Arch repositories, even though they're actually pretty common programs that probably should be in the standard Arch repositories. First, we need to do a EA space dash capital S space MU. We're going to install MU, which is a email indexer and searcher that's kind of what mu4e actually is it's mu for emacs i hope that makes sense and then space and then we also want to install a program called mb sync dash get so we need both of those programs and this may take a while to install uh, this is a fresh vm so i'm actually gonna have to actually run through the installation i know one of these actually can take some time to compile so uh, be prepared to wait a couple of minutes for this thing to compile. All right, and now that we have installed MU and MB Sync, the next thing I need to do is I actually need to install Doom Emacs within this VM. Now, you guys, if you're watching this video, you probably already have Doom Emacs installed. But for me, let me open up a browser. And if you've never installed Doom Emacs, it's actually pretty easy to install. Just do a quick search for Doom Emacs in your web browser and go to the Doom Emacs GitHub. And if you scroll down just a little ways, you will have the installation instructions. It is a simple git clone. So copy the git clone and paste that line. And it clones the Doom Emacs repository and then run the uh, Doom install command here. And we will let that install, close the browser out. The Doom Emacs installation will also take a couple of minutes to build. And Doom Emacs has finished installing. To make sure that Doom Emacs installed properly, let me go ahead and launch Emacs. And yeah, it looks like everything is working just fine. Now, we are going to play with the configuration file for Doom Emacs. The configuration file, if you do space period to open the find file command here, and navigate to .doom.d. That's a hidden directory in your home directory, .doom.d. And this is where your config.el, your init.el, and your packages.el should live on the system. Uh, we definitely want to go down to packages.el. And let me page down here. Go to the end of the document. And we want to start adding some new packages. Type the word package exclamation point space mu4e and then write that what this is telling doom emacs is it's a third party package mu4e uh, i want you to install it the next time we rebuild doom emacs but we're not done yet other than adding package exclamation mu4e to the packages.el we also want to go into the dot doom directory and get into config.el and what do we need to add to the config.el? Well, the easiest thing would be for you guys to go to my GitLab. Go to gitlab.com slash dwt1 and look for my dot .files repository. Go into my dot .files repository, go to the .doom.d folder, and go to my config.el or my config.org. I'm going to click on config.org because it's easier to read. It's a literate config that's got a lot of comments. And if you scroll down to MU4E, there's a heading called MU4E. There it is. And what you want to do is just grab this entire block of code here, the source block, and paste it into your config.el. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to git clone my entire .files repository. Since these are my personal configs anyway, I'm just going to use my config. So I'm going to get back over here. I'm going to close out Doom Emacs here since I'm going to use my configs. And I'm going to run a git clone https colon slash slash 
gitlab.com. Uh, one period too many. Maybe some input lag from the VM here. GitLab.com slash DWT1 slash dot files dot git. And we're just going to clone my dot files. This will take uh, just a, a minute or two. Oh, that was actually pretty fast. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a graphical file manager because we're going to be creating some various files here. And I think it'll be a little easier to show you guys some of what we're going to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my doomd directory here from the dot files repository we just cloned. I'm just going to copy that and then I'm going to go back into the home directory and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to overwrite the default doom emacs configs with my personal configs. Now that I've done that though, we have to rebuild doom emacs. So I'm going to clear the screen here and I'm going to run this command here dot emacs dot d slash bin slash doom space and then instead of install which is the command to install doom emacs we're going to do sync which is a, a rebuilding of the system based on packages dot el init dot el and our config dot el because all three of those files have changed because I copied my configs into that directory. So it's got to rebuild it's going to install all the plugins that I use in my configs. This may take a second. All right, Doom Emacs finished rebuilding. So let me switch workspaces here and launch Emacs again. Let's make sure my config file is actually working. It doesn't look like the theme loaded. If I, my key bindings all work though, it looks like. So let me go into .doom.d and go to my config.org. Yeah, it looks like all my plugins and everything are working because it's got icons and you know everything that's in my config, but for some reason the theme did not set. So if you do what I just did and get clone my Doom Emacs and you get this white screen, just do space HT. And this uh, allows you to change the theme and the theme that I use, at least the theme that's listed in my config that should have loaded, but for some reason did not, is Doom-1. Load that. All right, and that is my proper config. It looks like one of the problems with the config is it could not locate a font, Mononoke nerd font. Okay, so that may have also been an issue. Maybe that's why the config was a little wonky there. So if I go to the table of contents here in my config.org and click on MU4E, it'll take us to that section. The VM is a little slow here because one of the fonts that's listed in my config isn't here. <laughs> it's causing us some issues. But anyway, in the MU4E section, you see the source code block. It's exactly what was on my GitLab. It's the exact same thing. And all you guys probably need to do is go in here and change the settings. Uh, for example, you need to obviously change my email address to your email address, my name to your name. Uh, the other thing you should do is I have a line in here that says mbsync-c and then .config slash mu4e-dt. That's specifically for me. But if you guys want to use my configs, I want you to change this line to just .config slash mu4e, not mu4e-dt. The reason is I have my personal mu4e configs in a, a, a different directory than the ones that are listed in my dot files. So change that line if you are using my config. And then what we need to do is I'm going to go back to this workspace here, go into my dot files repository once again, and go into dot config, and then look for the MU4E folder that we just referenced and copy that. Then go back into the home directory to your proper dot config directory and paste that MU4E directory. Now I created these files in this directory and put these in my dot files just for purposes of this video and to help you guys get up to speed with MU4E very quickly. So let me show you the most important file here is the MBSync RC. And I'm going to open that in Doom Emacs and I went ahead and installed the proper fonts off camera so my Doom Emacs config now loads properly and now I should be able to use my uh, functions to zoom in. And let's see, can I change this to full screen here? There we go. All right, so the MBSync RC is pretty easy uh, to configure. You have your IMAP account and you need to name a email store. This will be a directory somewhere on your system. 
I just name it user dash domain is the convention I use. So Derek at distrotube.com, I'm going to have a folder called Derek dash distrotube. Then I have my host, which I host my own email at one and one.com. It's a very large uh, domain registry. And then my user is, of course, Derek at distrotube.com. The email address is the username typically. And then the pass command is this GPG2 command because we are going to GPG encrypt our email password. So just leave this as is. Uh, there's really nothing you guys need to change except the name of the folder, the host, and the username. The rest of this, well, you also would have to go in and change all the Derek dash distro tubes here because that particular directory, of course, you will want to change to a different directory. And then just as an example, I set up a second account because many people, of course, have more than one email account. And this is a fictional account, Mary Sue dash DistroTube. That will be the directory, the email store. And maybe her email address is Mary Sue, <laughs> Mary underscore Sue at DistroTube.com. Anyway, I'm just showing you how to set that up if there was a Mary Sue at DistroTube.com email address. So that is the MB sync. Let me close out of that. Let me pull back up my PC Man FM here. Now, the other file here, MB Sync Pass, uh, you actually can't read that. Let me do a folder view and detailed list view. MP Sync Pass dash ACC1. Now, you actually need two different files. If you were doing two email addresses like I'm doing, which is Derek at distrotube.com and Mary Sue at distrotube.com, then I also need to create a second empty file. I'm going to call it MB Sync pass dash ACC two for account two. And then these are plain text files. These are plain text files. You need to put your password in these files. So if I open this, I'll open it again and do me max here. It should just be one word. It should be your password. This is a fictional password, of course, password one, two, three, four. Imagine that's your password. And then the same thing with MB sync uh, account two. So if I opened MB sync, dash ACC2. Uh, we need to insert a password for this as well. I'll do one password one, two, three, four. We'll just assume that it's the same password. And then once we have those done, what we want to do is we want to encrypt these files because we don't want our passwords just sitting around in a plain text file. So in your terminal, what I would do is CD into the dot uh, config slash MU four E directory, and then run the following command GPG two space dash C space mb sync pass dash account one and it's going to ask you to enter a passphrase enter a passphrase that would be able to unlock this gpg account uh, make sure you pick something that you could remember if you need it because if you lose the uh, passphrase you could be in trouble and you see over here that now we have mb sync pass dash account one and we also have mb sync dash uh, account one dot gpg because we encrypted the plain text file now that we've done that delete the plain text file we don't want that right now we just have this encrypted thing that nobody can read except you because you have the passphrase now we also if since we had a second account let's go ahead and encrypt the second account as well once again the, pick a passphrase that you can remember here all right now that we have those delete the account to plain text file so you should have your MB sync RC, which is the config file, and then the two password files that are GPG encrypted. And of course, that's assuming you're using two accounts for email. If you just have one email address, then you're only going to have the one uh, account, one.gpg. Now let me clear the terminal here. We need to run the following command. I'm going to run time. And the time command is just giving me the time that it takes for this to actually run. It's not really the command. The actual command is mu. Because remember, we installed the MU program from the AUR and then index dash dash mail DIR for mail directory equals and then the location of our mail directory. Put it in your home directory at mail DIR, uh, capital M mail DIR. Then also give it this flag dash dash my dash address equals and then in single quotes, put your email address. So I'm going to do uh Derek at distrotube.com. Oh, that period that appeared twice again. I hope you guys can see that. Let me adjust this so you can see the full command time. 
mu index dash dash mail deer equals the mail deer then dash dash my dash address equals your email address run that command uh, not that command will actually not run until we create the directories uh, I should have known that so what I'm gonna do is in the graphical file manager since we have it open go back to your home directory and if you don't already have that mail deer directory then why don't you create a new folder and call it capital M mail deer now what you also need to do is go into the mail deer directory and create in my case two other directories because remember the email stores now what mine are remember in my MBR sync there was a folder that should be called Derek dash distro tube there was also the fictional second email account I was setting up for Mary Sue dash distro tube. Now, whatever you name your stores and your MB sync RC, then you need to create these folders with the proper names. Now that I have those names, though, let me run that time mu index command once again. And I still got a failure. I think the failure is because I didn't uh, run the mu init. Let me rerun this command. What I'm going to do is instead of time mu index, time mu init with the same flags, the mail deer flag and the my address flag. And that time I think it ran correctly. I, I didn't get the, uh, the same kind of error messages. Let me clear the screen here. The next command I'm going to run is time and then we're going to do the mb sync command and give it this flag dash c for config and then we need to give it the path to our config which in my case is at the dot config slash mu for e folder mb sync rc space and then finally give it a dash a flag at the end run that command if everything works correctly it will download all of your emails locally and put them in the proper folders now in my case it doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is for two reasons. One, Mary Sue dash DistroTube doesn't actually exist. That's not a real email address. And Derek at DistroTube is a real email address, but his password is not password 1234. <laughs> so that's the reason it actually fails. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to go back and create those GPG files with the right passwords so you can see the sync actually work correctly. All right, so I went back and... Uh, created the uh, GPG for MB sync dash account one again with my actual password. <laughs> so now let me run that command again, that uh, MB sync command. I'm going to run time MB sync space dash C space the path to our MB sync RC file space dash A. And you can see it's actually downloading emails. Where is it storing them? Well, if I open up P PC man FM again, and if I go into mail deer, to Derek DistroTube, you see it created you know, all of these folders, archive drafts, inbox sent. Uh, a lot of these folders were specified, by the way, in the MB sync RC file. Uh, you know, the trash was just created here. But you can see it's uh, downloading all of my messages locally on the system. And now when we launch Emacs and then launch MU4E, I should be able to actually read those emails inside Emacs. Uh, I'm going to give this another couple of minutes here to download these messages. It looks like it's downloading 5,365 emails. All right, and that command completed. And since we timed it, it took 2 minutes and 22 seconds for it to download all of those emails. Uh, we did get an error, of course, from the fictional Mary Sue <laughs> account, but that's fine. It actually uh, downloaded uh, Derek at distrotube.com's email. So if I open up Doom Emacs... I don't think I'm going to need the terminal again, so let me close the terminal and let me toggle on big font mode so we can read. And if I do meta X and type MU4E to launch the MU4E email client, it's going to say something about certain folders don't exist on the system. So uh, any email folders that it wants to create, just type Y for yes and let MU4E create those. And... There you go. This is MU4E. This is the home screen. Uh, you could U to update the email and the database. Now, since I just ran uh, that command in the terminal to pull down my messages, I know they're up to date, but U to update. You could also type capital J to jump to a mail directory. So if I type J, it lists all the available folders I could go to. And I have hotkeys in my config.org that allow me to jump between 
inbox and sent and trash. So if I type I on the keyboard right now, you can see it will go to Derek DistroTube's inbox. And there you go. This is my email. If I wanted to go down here and read one of these emails, so uh, maybe I wanted to read this latest message from the AUR mailing list here. I don't know what this message is about, but it's a public mailing list. So no harm in reading this. You can see, you just click on it. You can read it when you're done with it. Type Q on the keyboard for quit, and then just move down to the next email you want to read. For those of you wanting to learn how to use MU4E, it's pretty intuitive to use. You could always just look up the commands within Emacs itself or do a quick search on the web. But that's really beyond the scope of this video. This video was mainly to show you guys how to set up MU4E in Doom Emacs because it is tricky, right? We had to install a couple of different packages from the AUR, MU and MBSync-GET. And then we had to add a little bit of uh, code to our config.el and our packages.el. And we had to rebuild Doom Emacs. We had to create several directories on the system, including the .config slash MU4E directory, along with our MBSync RC config file. Then we had to create our plain text password files. Then we had to GPG encrypt those password files, delete the plain text files. Then in our home directory, we needed to create the mail deer directory. And then within the mail deer directory, we had to create directories for each of our email accounts for their email stores. Because of all that, you guys can see why it's taken me a while to get around to making this MU4E video, because even after going through all of what I just went through and showing you guys how to set this up, really what I set up works for my email accounts. I don't know if it's going to work for your email accounts because most of you guys have a Gmail account. I don't know anything about Gmail. I don't know what your MB sync RC file should look like for Gmail, but I will tell you that I will post a couple of links to some post on r slash Emacs because I found a couple of really nice posts about setting up MU4E on r slash Emacs. Matter of fact, this post here, MU4E for Dummies, was posted over a year ago. I actually have this bookmarked and I've had it bookmarked ever since I first started using Emacs because I always check this out when I set up MU4E. This has always been my guide to setting it up. And most of what I did on camera today was commands directly from this Reddit post. Now, those of you that are using Gmail, I also found this Reddit post here. I'm also going to link to this in the show description. How to easily manage your emails with MU4E, also from r slash Emacs. And it looks like this guy is a Gmail user. So you might check out his settings and you know how he's setting up his MB Sync RC for his Gmail account. Between my video and these Reddit posts, though, I think you guys should be able to work it out and get your email client working within Emacs because whoever wants to leave Emacs, once you open it up, you want to be in that thing, right? Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. I need to thank Devin, Fran, Gabe, Corbini, and Mitchell, Akami, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, David, the other David, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, I lost count, Paul, Pick VM, Scott, Willie. Hope I named everybody. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this episode. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because without these guys, this episode about the MU4E email client within Emacs, it wouldn't have been possible. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. Look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.